Hi guys, it's John Alimi Exotics here. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick shipping video for you guys because I haven't done one in a while and we have a lot of shipments going out this week. Um, but I just wanted to sh give you guys a rundown of the basics of how to ship a ball python. So, we start with the ball python. This is a really nice uh, banana champagne male ball python. I really love the purples in here. Obviously not going to show up on the video, but you know, awesome color. Probably one of my favorite simpler uh, combos. Then you take your snake bag. Standard snake bag. Okay, so what I do is I take some paper towel and I take maybe two or three sheets. There we go. Put that over there. Just crumple it into a little ball. Open up your snake bag. Stick the paper towel in the snake bag. This is good because if the snake pees or poops and come on. This is why you need a helper to do videos. Okay. So you get the snake paper in there. Then you take the snake, put the snake inside the bag. Because the paper towel is good for absorbing pee or poo in transit. Because when the snakes get bounced around a lot, um, they tend to pee and poo. So that'll help keep them from having to sit in their own waste, because that's no fun. Okay, so you got that, then obviously you're going to tie this up. I definitely can't do that one-handed. So give me one second. Okay, got this. Next, you take buds. This is polyfill. Polyfill is basically, it, actually it's not basically, it is the stuff that's inside of a pillow. So you put the pillow stuff right like that. Make a nice little cushy bed for the snake. Then... Once the snake bag has been tied, this is just for representative purposes, you put that inside the bag, or inside the box rather. And then that's gonna go like that. Then, this is how I do it. You don't have to do it this way, but this is how I do it. You take more fuzz. You put fuzz around the snake. And then you go like this. More fuzz. Not too much fuzz though, because that's too much fuzz. But not too much fuzz because you want them to still be able to move around inside the move around inside the bag a little bit so they can breathe and adjust themselves accordingly. So you want to have just a little bit in there. So that way if they get dropped or bounced around, because we know FedEx isn't that gentle with them, um, they don't get hurt. So this will help. Also, this fuzz is good for insulated purposes. So from heat and stuff like that. So if it's really hot out or cold out, then it will be okay. Then take a heat pack. You shake it up. And then you let it sit for about 20 minutes. Make sure it's getting warm because some of them do fail. So you got to make sure um, that they aren't failing. And once you feel that this is warm, you tape it down. Don't cover up this red line. I like to tape it to the top. Some people put it in a box. I like the top better because that way you know that the heat is being dispersed pretty evenly. If it's all jammed down there, it might be too hot for the snake and you don't want that. The biggest cause of DOAs in snakes is overheating, not underheating. So especially with the 777, just use one heat pack. You don't need more than one heat pack. Um, and if you do need more than one heat pack, you should wait for better weather. That's the bottom line. You should just be patient. If you need more than one heat pack or you think you do, then don't ship. Just wait. Okay, so we're tying that up, then we tape this on. Make sure you tape it all the way to the back because otherwise the tape will just pop off and it'll fall off into the box and it's kind of pointless to tape it if you're not going to do it well. Um, and also, once this is not taped like this, basically how these heat packs work is it's a chemical reaction. The more oxygen this gets, the hotter and faster it will burn out. This is a 40-hour heat pack. You want to use 40-hour heat packs just like this, UniHeat. It's the go-to for the industry. Use that 40 hours, or you can use even higher, more more hours if you want to, but 40 hour is the standard. Go with that. Uh, don't use the little hot hands heat packs unless it's a really an emergency, but if it's that case, then you should just buy heat packs and wait for shipping. Just wait. Always be patient when you're shipping. Never rush it. Make sure the weather is good, and be patient because you really don't want to have a snake delivered or a reptile delivered to somebody and it be dead on arrival because then you have to refund them and they're going to be upset and you're going to be upset and everybody is going to be upset. So be patient. Yeah, some customers don't want to be patient. Then guess what? They don't have to be customers if they're not going to be patient. Um, put this on top like that. And then if you have a receipt, business card, whatever, I, I have both of those. So I put them right on top of here and then you close it up. Close up the box. Okay. 
So the box has been closed. Then, according to the federal government, you need to write the scientific name and the common name and the quantity on the box. I usually write it right here and then put the label on top like that. Um, you can put it, the scientific name and the common name pretty much anywhere you want, but you got to make sure they're visible because especially in Florida, if DFWC catches you without having that there, they'll give you a nice fine and you get in lots of trouble. Um, I'm pretty sure everywhere else they don't really care, but just do it because that's what the government says you should do when it takes you no effort or time or anything to do that. And you really should know the scientific name if you're selling the animal, so go ahead and do that. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Then seal it up and put the label on there. Ship FedEx priority overnight. Don't ship ground. Um, you might get away with it a few times, but if something gets delayed and people hear about it, it's not, it's not going to end pretty for you. I'll tell you that right now. Um, also, always use live harmless reptile rush boxes. You have to have live harmless reptile on there. You're also supposed to have inside the box, supposed to say live harmless reptile, um, hand, you know, handle with care. I basically write this exact same thing on a receipt. Um, but you want at least a box like this and it needs to be marked with live animals because that's industry standard and that's, I'm pretty sure, regulated by FedEx. Also, if you're shipping snakes, you're supposed to only go through FedEx. USPS doesn't like snakes. UPS doesn't like snakes. UPS will let you ship reptiles that aren't snakes. So geckos, lizards, stuff like that, you can ship UPS. I mean, yeah, UPS. I think that's pretty much it. Um, and this is how we ship at Olympian Exotics. So if you have any questions or you'd like any reptiles, check out the website, olympianexotics.com. Um, my name's Jonathan, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think that that's pretty much it. And that's how you should ship your reptile. And that's how you should be receiving reptiles too. So if you get one that's not shipped like this, you might want to be like, Hey, you didn't do it right. Or, Hey, maybe you should improve your practices. I don't know. Stuff like that. Or you could just, hopefully you got your animal in good shape and everything worked out. Cause a lot of people do ship wrong or not the same way that I do and everything works fine. So I guess if everything works out, then I guess it worked out. But um, this is the standard, and this is the way to do it with the most success for you and for the animal. So, hope you guys enjoyed watching, and hope that was an informative video. Um, you can definitely check out OlympianExotics.com and see what we have available right now. Anyhow, have a great day, and thanks for watching.